What up guys, this is Versus Z and welcome to the first week of Riderfest. Week 1 we'll be covering Kamen Rider series Kuga, Agito, and Ryuki, or if you're more familiar with it, Kamen Rider Dragon Knight. Right now we'll be looking at SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Kuga in his ultimate form. This figure retails for 3300 Japanese yen, or roughly 35 US dollars, or in most cases $40. Uh, this figure was also released this year in June. First of all, taking a look at the package, you have your basic SH Figure Arts layout. It's all in uh, gray or silver if you like, and the text would be in black. You also have a grayscale picture of um, Kuga in his ultimate form in some uh, pyrokinetic pose here. Pyrokinetic meaning he can use like um, fire magic, things like that. You also have a little quote here about SH Figure Arts, and I'll read that in a sec. Um, you also have the Kuga symbol for the show here. Usually on top, on the upper right corner of every SH Figure Arts box is a little quote that says, SH Figure Arts is a new standard figure series that incorporates the Bandai action figure art under the, under the theme Pursuing Character Expression Through Humanoid Action. And taking a look at the, taking a look at the figure in a second, you'll see exactly what that means. I know it does say Masked Rider rather than Kamen Rider, but... Well, that's how they do it. And it says that on both sides. Can anyone even read this? I mean, obviously that's a telephone number to reach them at. The types of plastic that this figure is made of. And some, I guess, purchasing info. Barcode, obviously. Um, the one thing that I have to kind of nitpick about, just, just for my personal preferences, I kind of wish they had the yen price on the barcode like they had on... Not they had, but like they have on the... Uh, the uh, Gundam model kit boxes, it would just be a little bit more helpful. Just, uh, yeah, just a little bit more helpful for us reviewers here. But, like I said, it does retail for 3300 yen. Bandai 2010, so you know it's legit. Approved by Toy Company. When you turn it to the back, you'll see some shots of some poses that this figure could pull off. Not so great, not some of the best poses you can pull off. But trust me, you can pull off some really great poses. The neat thing about this particular release is that it comes with either the dark eyes or black eyes, or you can get the red eyes. I believe I have the red eyes on him right now. But yeah, you can swap the face out. You can get, there's the little pose, the pyrokinetic pose. On top here it says simple style and heroic action. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. This area here or this area here is the exact same thing that it says up here except it's in Japanese uh, characters. So yeah, pretty neat. Alright, so taking a look at the figure itself, looking at the details, with figure arts figures they like to focus on like on um, like what we mentioned earlier, like, like what I read earlier, an artistic uh, style to it and you can see that here. It's very detailed, not so much as an SIC figure but it's detailed to some degree. The entire, the entire figure is covered in this nice matte black finish with very few yeah very few paint defects here and there you also have some gold trim here and there mostly on his upper body and very subtle gray which I believe should have been silver but uh, you know gray the gray works out fine nice compound eyes there that works really nice and then you can see a very nicely painted grongi character for his ultimate form the belt is pretty detailed itself nice paint app, nice silver paint app. It's not a, a lame bland silver, it's just a nice metallic silver paint app, so that's really nice. Even on his legs. Now, one thing that I find a problem with a lot of figure arts is their joints and how um, Bandai chooses to conceal the joints. It's not so bad here in the legs, but very tiny nitpick here is how the joint is incorporated into the elbow right there. You've got this nice, you know, slim but bulky bicep here, but then you've got this very sleek looking elbow which just looks out of proportion and it looks really off now it's not not so bad once you get his elbows bent like that and you know it's not very bad but once you have his arms his arms his arms in a straight you know position like so then you know problems start to show up it's a very minor um, issue but you know it just it, it's just kind of an eyesore if you have his arm straight down like that so, but other than that, it's real. All the details are real great. Now, another detail I like they added here are the. Uh, well, I think this could have been done. 
No, that's fine right there. There, this, these right here are Gronky characters that represent that he has a powerful kick. Basically, if you've seen the original Kuga series, then you know what I'm talking about. And I like how he's got both of them on both feet. I'm not sure if this is entirely accurate because I I do have the SIC version and it looks slightly different than this, but you know just to know that they are right there as well. So that's nice that they paid attention to detail as much as they can, literally from head to toe. The detail is great, but the posability is so much better. You have joints, you have double joints here and there, you, um, you have hinges here and there. Everything works. You've got a joint where you would really need a joint. You've got a double jointed head, you got a joint where his neck attached to his uh, body, so you've got that right there, and you also have movement from the neck to the head, so that's pretty cool. Now his arms can rotate 360, go everywhere as much as you want. Now you see that it stops right there, right, and it's because of this armor. I just lift that up a little bit more and you're fine right there, so I like how they incorporated that. Um, you do get this weird effect that his armor is part of his shoulder rather than it's being part of his um, his torso there, but you know what can you do? It's for you to be get for you to get something smooth and and flawless looking. Then it's a sacrifice. You also have a rotation at the bicep. You got a double jointed elbow bend. It's a little bit over 90 degrees, but considering he's got a huge bicep and a huge forearm, you know as much as you're gonna get. You also get a swivel and rotating ball jointed wrist so it's pretty free moving you got a waist rotation a uh, waist articulation that can go up and down rotate you also have a second uh, waist rotation here at the bottom right where his uh, belt is so that's pretty cool now a lot of the figure arts have different style hips and I'm gonna call this one the basic style hip uh, the basic style hip basically means it's um, it's got a ball joint I don't know if you can see that, but there's a ball joint in there attached to the hip. You also have a rotation at the hip itself, so you basically have two points of articulation at the uh, at the hips. So that's a nice bend right there. You also have a nice double jointed knee bend. And the feet, which are made of die cast. Most of, most or if not all, um, SH figure arts, Kamen Rider figures have die cast ankles to help maintain with stability. Now you have full rota full articulation here. They can go up and down. They can rotate side to side. They can rotate left and right. There's even a toe articulation like that. So you've got quite the posable figure with this guy. Now before I go over accessories, just a little bit of a background story. Not background story, but a little bit of a info on Ultima Kuga. If you're not familiar with the series or have no idea what Kamen Rider is or just have no idea, of any, no clue anything about this character, Kuga is mostly a brawler. With a few exceptions of when he would Chohenshin into different forms like his Pegasus form, he'd have a gun, or his dragon form, he'd have a rod or staff or something, or his titan form, he'd ha and he'd have a sword. And there are figure watch releases of those same uh, forms, but you'd have to look hard to find them. Now with the normal Kuga, the mighty form, and even this form, the ultimate form, doesn't have any weapons, so his accessories are pretty much only these. Yep, you got a handful of, well, hands. Um, and they're all just they're all just here to to replicate, you know, all the different poses, all the different varieties of poses you can pull off just using different hands. As you know, plain and boring as that sounds, you can actually get different characteristics with this figure. On top of that, I'm also not showing something, but you get an alternate face for the Dark Eyes Kuga or Black Eyes Kuga, Ultimate Kuga. It's basically when he has no, the character has no control over the Kuga form, and he goes berserk. He uses the Dark Eyes. Now the different hands he comes with, the ones you saw earlier are already on him. Uh, I'll go over those in a second. But you get closed fists. You get these kind of nearly clenching, kind of wanting to hold something fist. I don't know what. Ultimate Kuga would be holding, but I guess you get that. You get these uh, more rage, kind of dark side, use the force kind of hands. And then the the pair of hands that are already on the Ultimate Kuga figure were the kind of uh, pyrokinetic hands or more splayed out anger hands. These sets of hands here are more for his um, if and when he would do an ultimate kick. 
an ultimate, uh, you know, ultimate uh, Kuga kick if he ever did that. They're more calm, more, you know, relaxed um, martial arts style hands. And then you also get this thumbs up hand. If you if you know what that is, if you don't know what this is for, basically the character um, who is Kuga, as badass as he looks, is actually a kind-hearted guy. So he's got the thumbs up thing just to show that even though he he looks very demonic, looks very evil, he's still a kind-hearted person. So he's got the thumbs up. Swapping hands in and out is not a chore at all. You basically just pull, pop, and you're ready. Now with the head, same idea. You just basically pull off the face, and there's the entire compoundness there. That's the secret to it. Then you just swap it out. Or not swap it out, but swap it back in. And now you've got Kuga in his black eyes form. Let's go over the posability now, shall we? Having just hands and an alternate face as the accessory count is not so bad for me. I'm not sure how you guys feel about that, but it really ain't so bad for me because I can either make him look like a deranged psychopath or I can swap out his hands and his face and make him look like the most badass looking good guy ever. Although we've never actually seen Kuga Ultimate Form perform his ultimate possibly could destroy the world with one kick, Rider Kick, I guess with the help of a Tamashi stage act, and your imagination, I guess Bandai leaves it up to you to figure out what that looks like. This is only one of my thoughts. I love Kamen Rider figure arts because they come with these die-cast ankles that can help you do poses even on the ground, even without the use of an action base or a Tamashii A stage act. This is an example of one. I think I'm impressed. Really quick, some size comparisons, and here's another SH figure arts release, the Kamen Rider Double Cyclone Joker. As you can see, even though Cyclone's Joker's, I'm, I'm sorry, Ultimate Kuga's legs are splayed out a little bit and Cyclone Joker's legs are more close together, Ultimate Kuga actually is a much taller figure than most SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider releases. So if you're into size, I guess, then Ultimate Kuga is another figure for you. And just for the hell of it, a size comparison with a 3 and 3 quarter inch Hasbro figure, Iron Man 2, that's the Mark 6, and a typically sized 1 to 144 scale high grade, the O Gundam. Alright, so for my final thoughts on this figure, let's start with some of his cons, and he really doesn't have too much. Uh, the only things I can really think of is his accessory count. I mean, honestly, he has a lot, but I guess if you're going for a variety, like weapons and things like that, then maybe it might be not so attractive to you, but I honestly find that that's enough for this figure. With the swapping of the face, I mean, you get the dark eyes, which means, you know, a berserker type, or he just has no control over himself. And with the use of the different hands, you can really change up the personality of this figure with just the swap of a few parts. And they're not even all that hard to swap either. Uh, the different hands also have their own personalities as well. So you can definitely play around with the possibility. And I guess the only other thing I can think of that's a knock against the figure is, the, I mean, you can see on the lower corner right there, his elbow joint and how it's incorporated. It's like bicep, oh, it's a joint and then forearm. It's, it's just weird. And sometimes if you look at it at, if you look at it the wrong angle, you can see the silver piece that's in the joint that, you know, keeps the pieces in together. So it's kind of a inconsistency there. And my real only gripe. Now for the positives, well, I mean, you've got very fluid posability. You've got a very detailed figure from top to bottom, even underneath his feet. You've got the compound eyes, which is always a, a treat. And just the fact that it's just a cool looking figure. So very high playability as well and there's really not much that I can complain about so that leads me to saying can I recommend this figure I mean if you're a fan of Kuga I mean just, of course go ahead pick him up 3300 yen uh, if you're a fan of Ultimate Kuga this is probably another good um, another good and maybe one of the only best uh, or better Kuga action figures out there if you're a fan of Kamen Rider why not add this on your collection but if you're just a general consumer you have no idea what this figure is or you want to get into SH Figure Arts, then I would definitely believe that this is a solid purchase. You get a good amount of accessories, very high playability, and it's very rare that you can change the personality of a figure just by, uh, you know, a swap of a few parts, very few parts to swap out to, just some hands and and a face, and that's pretty much it. And they're all really easy to, um, real easy to swap in and out. And there's barely any pieces that can fall off or anything like that. This figure is just very solid. So uh, I can definitely recommend it to a general consumer as well. If they want to get into the SH Figure Watch line, this is a very good 
um, solid purchase. Um, but once again, this figure retails for 3,300 yen. But unfortunately, I looked in Hobby Land Japan and even in CS Toys International or CSToysJapan.com, and both sites have this figure discontinued. But that doesn't mean it's entirely gone. You can still try and find it, but if no luck, then I'm pretty sure this figure is looking uh, looking good for a re-release in the next few months. So with that said, I'm going to give this figure a solid 9 out of 10. Uh, if it wasn't for this elbow inconsistency, it would be a perfect 10. But with that, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, review. Hope you hope you guys found this helpful or useful for any who were curious about the figure. Hope you enjoyed the review. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Enjoy Riderfest.